comments. How are you guys doing today? How to put chats to car. Uh. Oh, excuse me. I'm very burpy lately. I used to burp all the time, but then I wouldn't like excuse myself and then people start getting mad. So I was like, oh excuse myself I don't need to offend people I just I'm a burpy gal and I burp a lot and it's just the world that I live in and it's just how it is from all the times anyway <clears throat> hi Jenny how are you <clears throat> how are you guys doing tonight we'll see how many people we get hi Shauna We just got home from a family trip, or family trip, family party gathering at Danny's parents' house. I wanted to talk about, hi, Mr. Zafrod. Um, oh, I get it. Wait, is it like, are you making a play on like, Zach Efron maybe? Af Efrod? Zafrod, no, that's not the same name, right? Um, hi, Michelle. Good, good to see you too, Jenny. I was really curious about what the most common eating disorders were, so I thought it'd be kind of fun to like, not fun, but interesting to Google and see what we can find. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to Google first. Um, most common eating disorder in the U.S. Um, if there's like statistics or something I don't know or we could talk about something else I'm just like trying to have some sort of a is Paul here Paul hmm eating disorders are caused by many factors and can be life-threatening anorexia nervosus nervosus symptoms include avoiding eating around people compulsive exercising and obsessive calorie counting Bulimia nervosa is a condition that involves purging food by vomiting or using laxatives. Binge eating is the most common eating disorder in the United States and often seen in obese people. There are additional types of eating disorders that are physically and emotionally damaging. True. Why didn't they teach us that in school? I'm just saying. They could have taught us this in school a long time ago and we could, um, you know, learn and be warned and anyway. Um, ooh, symptoms. Symptoms of anorexia include noticeable weight loss, hiding weight loss with baggy clothing, obsession with calorie counting and dieting, refusal to eat certain foods or food categories, avoiding, avoiding eating around other people, compulsive exercising, Cessation of menstrual cycles, Ugh. denial that thinness is a problem. Symptoms of bulimia include chronic sore throat and swollen glands in the neck and jaw from frequent vomiting, dental problems like decay, sensitivity, and worn enamel from exposure to stomach acid, frequent, frequent acid reflux, intestinal, irrit intestin intestinal irritation from laxative abuse, dehydration, electrolyte imbalance from improper levels of calcium, sodium, potassium, and other minerals. Signs of binge eating include presence of large quantities of empty food wrappers or containers, disappearance of large amounts of food in a short period, food hoarding or storing food in strange places, wearing loose clothing to hide weight gain, avoiding eating around other people, attempting to diet to lose weight but not being able to do so, well, those are the most three common, I guess, in the U.S. That is very interesting. I mean, I feel like... Let me pull through comments. Hi, my name is Paul. Hi, Paul. Yeah, so BED is the most common. Um, Penny, can I tell them what happened? I won't give, like, say who it is or anything, but be interesting to talk about that if you would like to. Um, can someone tell me if eating disorders can cause kidney problems? Yes, eating disorders can cause all problems. 
Actually, I'm not a doctor, don't ask me, but I believe that I can because I developed kidney problems later in life after my, I would say around bulimia, anorex, my very first anorexia stint, maybe. But yeah, I'm pretty sure eating disorders can cause kidney problems. Eating disorders causes everything bad. It can literally lead to anything that can kill you. Heart attacks, strokes, other things. I don't know, I can't think on the spot. Thank you. Um, oh, I'm sorry, knitting with Lisa. I have struggled with anorexia, bulimia, binge eating, and orthorexia at different points. Today has been, today, oh, I read that wrong. Hold on, sorry. I am very tired. I read that as, <laughs> oh, you said, today I had a, hun a handful of sunflower seeds and I read it as, wait, what did I read it as? Oh no. Now I forget what I read it as. I read it as like, I felt like a hand, yeah, that's what it was. I felt like I had a handful, I felt like a handful of seeds, of sunflower seeds. I'm like, how do you feel like, what does that mean? What's a metaphor, what's that metaphor for? I can't talk today. Okay, I can talk about it. All right, so. All right, so, um. My best friend, Penny, one of my best friends, um, her friend passed away from bulimia and she was 44 years old. This just happened like a couple days ago, a few days ago. She was 44 years old. She died from bulimia and alcohol problems, but it was the bulimia that actually killed her. They found her in her bathroom and, um, and, um, no, Paul, go for it. What's it a picture of? <laughs> oh, gosh. Yeah, very sad and very scary and very like. Yeah. No, you're good. We're good. No, send it to me, Paul. Condolences to Penny. Yeah, this is pretty rough for Penny. Um, and, you know, she's worked with many people with many eating disorders and to have her own and suffered with one herself and to have her own friend die from an eating disorder. How did she actually die, Penny? Do you know that yet? Or are they, like, I know she was found in the hospital or in a bathroom, but did they say she died of like a heart attack from bulimia or? So sad. Everything gets deadlier with age. Get your hard living done while you're still young. Getting old requires a healthy mindset. Yeah, I was telling Penny, and I don't know if I should share this, but I shouldn't share most of the things I share with you. Um, I was telling her, like, I always thought I was either going to die at 30 years old or 44 years old. 44 is my favorite number, and for some reason my whole life that number has stuck with me. And so um, Penny told me that when her friend died, she was 44 and that she had had bulimia for 30 years. And so I thought about if I'm still bulimic, when I'm 44, I will also have had it 30 years at that point. And that really freaked me out.
my friend Penny, her friend died from bulimia a couple days ago. That's cute. Paul is watching me on his TV, so he sent me a picture. He sent me a picture of me. <laughs> of his TV. Oh, why? 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 Why are eating disorders so effing cruel? It just destroys you. It takes over every part of your life. I wish someone would have told me that. Like when I was younger, all I wanted to be was a mom. That's all I ever wanted to do. And I really wish that, like, this is where I wish they would start teaching more about it in school and stuff. Like, I really wish that. Um, I'm getting really hot in my hat, so I'm just gonna take it off. I really wish that somebody had told me, like, very specifically what could happen. So, like. I wish that someone would have said, hey, if you continue down this road of bulimia, you won't be able to have kids. Like, if someone had said something like that to me, to me, I would have stopped. Um, and everybody has that reason. Like, what would have stopped you back in the day? I'm, like, asking you, those of you that have had this disease for so long, what would have stopped you back then? And those are the things. Those are the things. All those reasons are the things that need to be taught in schools and do it. Why are we not doing it? Also, I have a snot bubble in my, in my throat that I have to go get out and you do not want me to do that on camera, trust me. Sorry if you hear it, I'll try and be discreet. I'll be right back. Hold on. <laughs> my shirt. Thanks. It's my shirt. I've literally been wearing it for like 10 years. Now yeah. you notice? It's my shirt. What are you doing? Just saying that. Are you, are, but what are you doing right now? Uh, I'm going to get a little snack and then I'm going to go down. Oh my god, get it down. I miss you. Thank you. Danny was leaving town for a couple of days. No one, mm. please, no one come and murder me. Huh? Nothing. What? I get paranoid when he leaves. <laughs> True. Danny. What? <laughs> Jenny says, I love how Danny is shushing us like Shani will actually hear us speak. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's a good point. Anyway, what were we talking about? Oh my gosh. Um, I'm looking at that photo a lot. I posted the photo in my, um, gosh, what video was that? My, my Halloween eating disorder video that I did on Halloween. I've been looking at that photo a lot because, um, Every single time I look at it, for some reason, I like picture 
that that's exactly like what Danny would find, I guess, if I were to die that way. And, and I can show the picture, but it's very, very triggering, but it is one that everyone should see. Oh, what's happening? Um, and I only knew about it from, uh, Mia, what Mia did next. Um, maybe we shouldn't look at this right now, but maybe we should, I don't know. Cause like, I've been like kind of obsessing over it and like studying it and being like, look at her hands, look at her back, look at everything. Is that what happens when you die? I don't know. It just has been scaring the shit out of me. So I don't know if you guys want to talk about that, but um, I think if someone had told me that it would be harder for me to have kids, I have had two miscarriages. I'm so sorry, Lisa. I really feel it should be. I used to have a really poor self-esteem or self-image of myself as a child. I guess I still do because of what people used to say to me, even family members. <sighs> I used to be in ballet until my mom took me out because I started obsessing about food. Oh my gosh. Have I seen this picture before, hon? I don't think you have. see your reaction to this. Annie's never seen this picture before, so I'd be curious to see what this feels like. I can find it. That would be probably the worst thing ever. Yeah. Don't do that. Anyway, okay, I'm gonna show the picture. Trigger warning, but also people should see. I've already showed it before. Okay. I'm showing it again. I'm going to. Oh. Where did I see, who was I? Oh, um, Selena Gomez, I guess, is trying to make, wait, I don't wanna get this wrong. Some, something about like teaching more about mental health in school or something like that. Does anyone know what I'm talking about? Um, the main cause for your eating disorder was being bullied in high school, I'm so sorry. That was my part of my story as well and it was really really hard and I'm so sorry you had to go through that hard to make out what the photo is 
Um, it's just a photo of a girl who died while purging and they found her body like that and it was already like if you want to see it again you can go see you can look it up or it's in my video from Halloween the Halloween day video um, what is it called Eating Disorders Kill graphic content. The photo is in there if you want to go see it. And it's pretty intense. Um, you don't think anyone would have stopped you? I don't know. What's the most important thing to you in your life? Amy! What is the absolute most important thing to you? So like for instance, Danny is the most important thing to me in my life. And so if I was told that I would lose Danny, if I kept going this way, then I would, that's a tough one. Being bullied for your rape is really crappy. I hated it. Very painful. Yes, what do you need help with, Amy? <sighs> Danielle, hi! You know what? I still have your cutie patootie little... Because um, you wrote me a letter. It was so cute and adorable. And so I put it up. It's up on my desk. Like, I look at it every single day. It's adorable. And it says Shammy Banani at the top, and that was long before I changed my channel name, which by the way, I'm changing it back, you guys, just as soon as I figure out how, as soon as I can get Paul over here to figure, teach me out how, figure it out how. Um, my family in general is important, but especially my dog. So if someone were to come to you at, the, at whatever age you started your eating disorder, think of whatever age you were, and you had that dog back then, and they said, you continue this you're gonna lose the dog just because it's like it gets worse the longer you're doing it when if you're doing it for a couple months it's a lot quicker to get over it it just is that's just how it goes you've done it for a couple years a lot quicker whatever years a lot quicker um i have a feeling this is not gonna stay on here <clears throat> and so that's why like that's why when I think about my story, I just wish back at the age of 14 when I started my bulimia, I wish someone would have told me, you're gonna lose all your teeth when you're 30 years old, you're gonna not be able to have kids, you're gonna lose relationships and, and uh, your health, and you're gonna be sick in bed every day, all day for the rest of your life because of health issues that were partially created from your eating disorder that came from that. Um, like. If someone had actually told me detailed the consequences, which is why it should be taught, and it should be taught in a way like they could mix some of it even into history, literally, and tell, story, tell these stories to people. Tell these stories to kids of what happens to people when they go down these roads. Like, why is this not being taught in school when it is such a big, running so largely and rampant in the rampant in the world right now and always why isn't it being taught oh i love it daniel it's the cutest thing i love it i look at every single day you have my shanny card we have a piece of each other <laughs> forever and ever you're the cutest daniel your gifts were so thoughtful um I think the hold society has on us, the whole society has on us as children is so strong that it's hard to imagine even important knowledge stopping something that's becoming so routine. It's so hard. Not to say that teaching this isn't really important because it is. Yeah, it is. It should be taught in schools. I agree. 
like in health class, more than just, hey, this is what anorexia is. Don't get it. This is what bulimia is. Don't do it. Eat healthy. That's it. That's literally it, is like the definition of not even all the eating disorders, just the main ones, you know? And then don't do it. But like, why? They should be taste they should be teaching an entire course on this and do their research and find stories like mine and like your guys' stories and people that have lost so much. Like that's a kid when you're a kid, when you're a kid and a teenager, there's always like whatever means the most to you means the most to you because you are so much more intense in your head when you're a teenager, especially. And so it's like, if you could go to that teenager and be like, Hey, guess what? You're going to lose whatever is the most important thing to you. Like if, if someone were to come to me when I was like 17 and be like, you are going to lose Brady. Who's my best friend in high school. Who's gay now, but whatever. But I was like obsessed with him. If someone had come and said, because in my, in at that, at that time in my life, that's all I thought about was Brady. So it was like, um, if you continue this bulimia, you're going to lose Brady. I would have been like, hell no, I'm, I'll stop right now. I'm not going to lose Brady. You know what I mean? So I don't know, teenagers, especially, but also like older young kids, like older kids and then teenagers, They need to be warned better than what's already not barely even there to be warning them. So I'm just saying. Um, I have two channels, this one and another Amy Haas blue reveal. What's the problem? Is Amy Haas one picture? I don't know what this channel is. Are you having trouble with your channels, Amy? I don't think I even heard of eating disorders in school. Yeah, I didn't either. I actually didn't either. How old are you, Shauna? I forget. You're around my age, aren't you? No, you're not. You're way younger. You've got to be younger than me. But either way, I also was never taught about eating disorders in school. Um, and I even yes, asked my niece recently, and she said they still just um, t tell you like what eating disorders are, and then that's it. Learning about anorexia in high school gave me tips and motivation to get worse, so it would need to be done very carefully. For sure, yes. I, that's totally valid, too. Yeah, you're 29. Okay. Yeah, that's for sure. That's, that's, it's, it's a tricky thing, but it's like they teach very openly about drug addiction and alcoholism. So, and that could also be a way of like, oh, okay giving me tips on how to become an alcoholic and how to be a drug addict. Like, but there is a way that you can figure out how to do it. It's just ugh, it's frustrating. But I can see that side of it too, where it's like, well, we don't, we also don't want to go and put ideas in kids' heads that they didn't even know of before. Like some kids don't even know what that is. And so then they read about it. And what if the wrong kid learns about it and the wrong kid gets the idea in their head that if they do that, they're going to get, a, get all this attention. So yeah, I can totally see all around. It's like so frustrating. How did you learn about bulimia if not in school? Um, actually, well, I don't remember. So this is something that's kind of still cloudy that we've been like, that I've been trying to work through in therapy for years and years and years is where and how did I get that idea to do that? Um, the, the only thing I remember is that I kind of figured it out myself, but I don't believe that. I believe someone told me or something, maybe, maybe not. I don't know. Maybe I just figured it out on myself by myself. I have no idea. Um, I don't remember where I thought like, oh, I could purge and throw up my food. I don't know where I got the idea, but I do absolutely will always. It is in burned in my brain the very first time I did it. I will never forget. I remember exactly what I ate. I remember exactly how much I ate. I remember exactly what the toilet and the bathroom and what the bathroom, the state of the bathroom was, like what was in the bathroom. Like I could draw it for you picture by picture. It is burned in my brain. And me just going over to the mirror afterwards and, oh, am I gonna cry? Whoa, no, no crying. Just like, just like looking in the mirror and being like, it felt like, It 
You know, like in the movies, how there's like the angel on the shoulder and the devil on the other? That's what it felt like. I looked in the mirror and I had the devil on my shoulder, which was Ed telling me like, good job. See how easy that was? Like, you could totally do that again. And then I got the angel over here being like, I don't think this is good for you. This is not good for you. Like, I knew it wasn't good for me, but I didn't know how bad it was for me. And I wish I would have. I did watch television as a kid, but thinking back on, like, I would watch G-rated. The only thing I can think of that maybe I also didn't remember at the time was... There's a Full House episode where DJ like tries to starve herself to do something and they kind of talk about eating stores for like a second in it, but nothing more than that and that's it. I'm trying to think of any other shows that I watched. I watched like only Disney and rated G television shows and family like TGIF. You guys are way too young to know what that is. A lot of you are anyway. Um, yeah, I don't know. Ugh. I don't know where it came from. I have an idea of where it came from, but I don't want to say. Just because I don't want anybody to feel bad. But I do... There's a person in my life that I feel gave me the idea. But I still don't have the full memory of it, so I'm not totally sure. It's just like a hunch that I have, you know what I mean? Tracy Gold did have anorexia. Yes, she did. I remember that. TGIF was the best. Loved it. Oh, I bet, Amy. No show about it when you were a little kid, yeah. The first time my anorexia was about control and just diet gone horribly wrong and I was in denial, but my two relapses were more dangerous because I used I used it to numb out. Oh wow. Ugh. I love you, Kenny. I wanna meet you. You're a creepy best friend in real life. So hard. Yeah, her and Kane's. Yeah, she did. And like, even these days, I mean, I feel like for the most part, maybe, um, people, I guess, on social media are getting way better at talking about it. Like, I remember when I first started YouTube, this is the reason I wanted to start YouTube was because I wanted to share and show what happens and try and warn people because I just was so tired of it and I felt so alone and, and I felt like what if I, maybe I can do this thing where I get people talking about it and also find support for myself and find other people that are struggling because I feel alone in it. Um, because back when I started, YouTube didn't do that kind of thing. Like, I never found hardly any, like, there were a couple things that were kind of maybe a little bit, you know, mental health eating disorder, but not a lot, like, sh showing, like, actually really showing and telling the hard, scary, embarrassing parts of it is what I wanted to do. Um, but now, seven years later, it's talked about a lot more, which is awesome. I just, I wish people would talk even more about it than it is now, and I wish people would show the consequences more. So a lot of people, I get a lot of criticism for showing, um, for like always talking about my health and always my bad health and always like whipping my teeth out and always talking about these things over and over and over and over and over. Yeah, I'm gonna do that, that's what I'm here for. So because more people need to do that. More people need to share their stories of what it's done to them because the consequences are what are gonna help, hopefully, stop people from, from getting where I am, I guess. Oh my gosh, I'm so sorry, Lisa. My bio dad was a ped who abused my siblings and I. I was adopted at age 14. I definitely relate to everything except the adoption. <laughs> I'm really sorry, Lisa. You didn't deserve that. 
you deserved a dad and a mom that loved you or two dads or two moms, whatever your situation was, but you deserve love and parents are supposed to fight for their kids, not hurt them. So I'm sorry that happened to you. You do, Jason. Yeah, Karen Car Carpenter. Yeah, my mom tells me a lot about how she felt when Karen Carpenter died and everything because she was very popular during my mom's teenage years, I believe. I think, yeah. Yeah, my mom was born 58, so. What? Tracy did a movie about a girl who was anorexic and bulimic and her parents took her, her character to court to help her with her mental health decisions. For the love of Nancy is the name of it. They took her to court for to help with her mental health decisions? What do you mean? I need to look up this movie. Hold on, hold on a second. What's it called? For the love of Nancy? See if I can watch it. Can I watch? You say for the love of Nancy, I think. For the love of. I bet it won't even come up because it's probably like an old movie. Oh, I see it. Okay. Mm. Okay, it's nowhere. I would have to buy the DVD. Oh, I think you can buy it. Oh, you can watch it on YouTube, I guess. Interesting. To gain power of attorney over her to declare incompetent to make decisions. Whoa, that's intense and something I'm not sure I fully understand. So I don't think I should comment because I'm not very educated with those words. I'm really kind of I'm learning. I'm a weird child. Mm. Oh man, Tracy was very sick. Yeah, she was. Hi, Katie. Love you. Mm. I was born in 1967. I remember Karen Carpenter. However, she passed away from anorexia. Never have been in the news before. I'm not even watch a body count case. I used to cringe when people brought up Karen Carpenter. Oh. go here in a minute. Do you guys want me to sing a song before I go? Yeah. I was sad to learn about it later. I wasn't alive when she died, but I was very sad to learn about it later. Like, I remember lear I learned about her when I was um, probably like five or six, maybe seven. And all I was told was that she died from anorexia. I didn't even know what anorexia was. I didn't figure it out until much later. And all I thought it was, was just starving yourself until you die, is literally all I thought. That's all I thought it was. That's if any time I heard the word anorexia or eating disorder, and it was talked about in such a, like, ugh, almost like a joking way when I was a kid. Like, looking back on it, like, oh, she's totally anorexic, or like, like in order to, Anytime, anytime someone would see someone super skinny, they would be like, oh, she's totally anorexic. Like, that's just what I heard growing up all the time, all around me. <sighs> Those are ridiculous. Um, oh my gosh, right, Penny? It's the worst. Thanks, Jason. That's sweet of you. Um, 
meant that she would not help herself, so her parents took over. Oh, okay. To get her the help that she needed so she didn't die. Oh, wow. That sounds interesting. I want to watch. Because she was a minor or... I need to go get my new teeth. These are falling out. You got in my life. Welcome. Anyway, my hair is so greasy. Very much time to wash it. So I should put that back on for now. Um. Of course, Kenny. Hmm. Possibly Jason, the model Twiggy. Probably started this trend. I don't know. Oh, that's awesome. Tracy used to host, host a show, too, trying to help people with eating disorders. That's amazing. That's really cool. Thank you. I have it in like five or six colors, I think. I have a white one, a black one, a dark gray one, a red one, pink one. How many is that? Black, white, red, pink, gray. I feel like I have another one, but I don't know what it is. That might be it. It is Christmas music season. What do you mean almost, Danielle? Get with the program. November 1st is Christmas music season. You hate me? <laughs> I'm one of those. Always have been, my whole life. Christmas is the greatest time of the year and I want to extend it as long as I possibly can. So I usually start decorating November 1st and which is why we're not in my kitchen right now because you can't see the decorations till I'm done and we're not done, we're not even close. Um, and then I leave my tree up until Valentine's Day. That's me, I'm one of those. Which is why I'm gonna sing you a Christmas song. <laughs> but it's okay if you're not. I've had people in the past get legitimately angry with me and I'm like, does it bother you that much that there's a Christmas tree in the background of my video during November? Is it that bad that you have to like leave a comment that's like, how dare you put up your Christmas tree for Thanksgiving? That is so disrespectful to Thanksgiving. And I'm like, well, the way that I was raised and how I see it, and this is just me and it doesn't have to be you. I'm not trying to like force it on you, but like Thanksgiving to me is part of the season. I feel like it's just one big season full of love and giving and and love and and Jesus if you believe in that and and just family time and being together like Thanksgiving and Christmas it feels the same to me and it's all the same to me it all blends together and it's all this big beautiful season of love and family and togetherness of, and happiness and people are nice usually sometimes that's just me though so People are really mad at me Cause I put up my Christmas tree Yes, it's December 1st But I want Santa to come early It doesn't really How's it go? Colleen wrote a Christmas song a long time ago We're gonna listen to it actually Because this sums up how I feel every time. Beautiful results. Pantene Gold Series works better because it's made better. <laughs> Marvel Studios Black Panther. Wakanda Forever. Only in theaters November 11th. Recently I've noticed that there's a lot of anger in the world on the internet. Which is understandable. 
There's a lot of things to be angry about in our world today. We've got things like wars, death, hate. But that's not why people are mad. They're mad because I decorated for Christmas too early for their liking. She does sound young. Well, that was like seven years ago, so almost. Oh. Go suck my ween if you don't like my Christmas tree.
Yeah, love it. Christmas means horrible Hallmark movies that you can make fun of. I just finished one tonight. <laughs> so accurate. I love, I love watching Hallmark Christmas movies. I, I just love the, oh, it's just so overly done and so cheesy. And plus my husband has worked on like a bunch of them. And so it's always really fun for me to like, sometimes I'll spot him in a scene and then sometimes I'll look for his name at, in the credits. At the end of at the end of the movie, it's always really fun. I love it. <laughs> sorry, I shouldn't have laughed. I'm sorry. Obviously, Colleen has a beautiful voice, but I prefer listening to you sing, Shami. Okay, that woman is classically trained, along with she has done dozens and dozens and dozens of musicals, and it's literally like been her career. To sing that I don't know why you're saying that is why I laughed but I will say thank you because I'm trying to work work on not being negative about myself so thank you for saying that sorry I laughed <laughs> yeah he's he's done a lot of Hallmark Christmas movies sometimes like there's a couple that I've watched where I'm like hey I was on set for that I was right behind the camera for that I'm totally famous I'm in a Hallmark movie oh my gosh and like I've made food and things like that for the movie. So if I see my food in one of the movies, I'm like, I made that turkey. I'm famous. So yeah, good time. Yeah, it's fun. I get to help out with props sometimes if he needs like food props or if he needs something with like pretty handwriting, he comes to me. Um, so like I remember doing some tags, making some tags to whatever the kids' names were from Santa, making them look all Christmassy and cute and Santa-like. That was really fun. All kinds of things, it's really fun. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, Jason. Oh, man. I don't know how well the singing's gonna go tonight. I'm not gonna lie, but I'll try my best for you. So what do you guys want to hear? Oh, you put so much emotion into your voice when you sing. Your musical talent is on a different level. It goes, it, it goes beyond pure technical skill. Thank you. That's very sweet of you to say. I just think I have a lot to work on. I just was born, sadly, with a musical ear, and I can hear things perfectly, but I can't hit them out perfectly, and so that's why I'm so hard on myself and I get so frustrated with myself, because I can hear every tiny little mistake, because I'm very pitchy, I'm not very breathy, I'm, I mean, like, I don't, I, I, my diaphragm is, like, very weak, and that's because of my health issues and eating disorders, Sometimes I wonder, what would my voice sound like now if I had stopped a long time ago? See, that's another thing it ruins. It ruins everything. But thank you for saying that. That's very sweet of you to say that. <clears throat> no, my it's not my throat. It's, it's, I just am like, don't have a lot of energy today. So it won't be like very powerful, I guess. That's okay. It's a Christmas song. What Christmas song do you guys like? I really want to, I love my favorite, one of my favorites. I have a lot of favorite Christmas songs. <laughs> I love Christmas music. Um, what we could do, maybe I'll sing two, maybe. What we can do is we can sing one for fun. See and let it warm up my voice a little and see how I feel after. And if I feel good, then maybe I'll attempt like, Oh, holy night or something, depending on how I feel. Should we try that? Yeah, so what's a soft, yeah, like let's sing a soft, easy, what's an easy for me to sing? Because we're all different. We all think different things are easy. Let me see, Christmas, karaoke. Where's my, where's my, uh, 
Christmas books. I play by ear, not by reading music, because I just can't do it. My brain doesn't compute that. Let's see. Um, I'm not getting any, many odd. Am I missing something here? Hold on. Hold on. Oh, there it is. Wait. No. No, 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 no. No, no, no. 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 Maybe I should look at your comments. Maybe someone has suggested something. Maybe it's cold outside. I just sang that a couple days ago, but I can try again if you want. Um, I really need to start coming prepared for this. So, <laughs> just that's a roasting on an open fire. Let's do that one. Christmas song. We'll see how this goes. Maybe he's here with me. I'll try this first. Can you tell me if the music is too loud when I'm singing? Just meant to sting on your open fire. Jack Frost nipping at your nose. Yuletide carols being sung by a choir and folks dressed up like Eskimos. Everybody knows a turkey. See, why would they say a turkey? Oh, because people eat turkey at Christmas. <laughs> Help to make the season bright. I just strained something when I yelled. Whoops. Tiny tots. Hold on. I've never heard of that in me, ever. <coughs> you know that Santa's on his way. He's loaded lots of toys and goodies on his sleigh. And every mother's child is going to Yeah, I need to warm up, guys. This isn't going well. How do I, how do I warm, how do I mute this? Can you mute these live streams while I warm up? I'm offering a simple phrase. I think I'm just nervous, maybe. To kids from 1992. Although it's been said many times <laughs> and you and too nervous.
welcome Merry Christmas that was great I'm like tearing up because I think because um because um I don't know I don't know why anyway I don't think my voice works today I can try a different one but and what else what else okay how about this one Sing. There's an app that can teach you how to sing. That's what I need to do. I don't. I don't know. Poor Chet. Chet the reindeer. Is that what we're talking about? So I wish I could sing Christmas Lullaby because that's one of my favorites. But I'll probably sing multiple times throughout the season. So get prepared. But I don't have the strength right now. What about Does this one let you sing the name? I think it does. How would they do that though? This can't be real. Because those are their voices for sure. Mary, did you know that you're a baby boy? Oh, I don't like that. Do you hear like the trail of the melody in the background? That's not cute. It's sons and daughters. Did you know that you're a baby boy? Story me off. You know what? You guys decide. Okay, it's not it's not working with the pentatonics one. Okay, you know what? I will sing whatever you guys want me to sing, and it it's it, it'll be horrible or great. So, what have I got to lose at this point? I'm having a little bit of a honestly, if I can be honest with you. Oh, I'm way over time. I'm having the reason I almost cried was that I have this thing my whole life where I never could sing in front of anybody ever. And, um, and I think it's because my whole family is so musical and so talented um, that I just would get nervous and I didn't like people looking at me and, and watching me sing and stuff. Well, it wasn't until I started YouTube and started singing on YouTube that I started to get over that fear. And it's to the point that I can sing with my family now, which is great. Um, but if I have like a solo or something, I still get really nervous and it like makes my throat close up, makes me get all shaky and my throat close up and stuff. And I go really pitchy and really just awful. And so I think that's what was just starting to happen. And I guess I started to cry because I'm frustrated because I thought I had gotten over that, <laughs> like that feeling of the throat is closing. I can't breathe. My stomach is weak. My diaphragm is weak. Everything is weak and I can't breathe and I'm nervous and there are 30 people looking at me right now and that's all I'm thinking about and oh my gosh I suck at singing and and then my voices just get away so that's what was happening is like that insecure feeling came back and I haven't had that for a little while I haven't had that for a very long time so I'm kind of like bummed about that so so what are we gonna do we're gonna sing anyway and get through it and get used to singing again it would help if I sounded okay today though Okay, um, oh, I'm sorry, Tasha. Okay. Is it crazy? 
Christmas Lullaby? Oh, it's called Christmas Lullaby. This is a shorter one, but it's really hard to sing. <laughs> so should I attempt it? Oh dear. Yeah. So I'm gonna attempt this. This is what I sound like. What you're about to hear is most likely gonna be what it sounds like at every family get together, every singing in church that I've ever done. I remember at my my brother's uh his farewell for his mission and his homecoming both i got so nervous that i couldn't sing at all and so it was me and my sister michelle up there singing and i just she knew that if i squeezed her hand it meant i couldn't do it so that happened a lot like my throat just would close up and i couldn't sing we made like a cd for my brother while he was on his mission for a church and uh, even the recording studio was just a complete nightmare for me. Um, just cause there's this man watching me in a booth that I don't know, I don't know who he is. And so it was terrible. Like, the, like I would never want you guys to hear it. It was so bad cause I was so nervous, you know. I don't think I could sing this, but we can try. Making dad's famous turkey. It's such a pretty great. song. I love this song. Find the hotel, vacation rental, cabin, castle, or chalet you want on a kayak. Search now. I'll never have the power to control the land or conquer. sung it ever for the future of the world inside of me such a pretty song though it is so beautiful covered it a couple times so maybe I'll practice that one for next time anyway all right well um Randolph the bow-legged cowboy. What the, what are you? I never know what you're talking about.
Mm, I don't think I feel that way, Lucy. Never too late. I wish that, I wish there were more of the message I saw around here. It seems like Shani thinks she's already lost all that she can. That's not true. There's more to lose and I fear she can't see it. Um, I don't think that's true, honestly. I don't. Um, I'm sorry if I give off that vibe. That's not how I feel. But I will continue to talk about the things that I have lost and that I can't get back because, no, it's not hurting at all. I'm just drawing, I'm just poking the pen on my hand. What was I saying? Um, what was I saying? Anybody remember? We need to see. I wish Shani could show us the same story. Seeing the consequences isn't enough. We need to see this amazing woman really fight to overcome this. Well, maybe, like, hopefully when I do overcome it again, you'll see it. But maybe you can't see it right now, but I am fighting right now. Maybe you just can't see that, and that's okay. Um, I don't know how to show you that I'm fighting other than bringing you to my therapy session. That's the only way I could actually show you the work I'm doing because the work that I'm having to do isn't appropriate to share with you. And I share everything on the internet. And this is stuff I don't want to share and I can't share. So I just have to be like, okay, well, I had therapy today and this is what I learned from it. Or this, this is how it's helping my situation or whatever like that, you know what I mean? But like, I can't like show you guys, like I, I can't show you um, working through like my trauma because I don't want you to know it. I don't want you to know some of it. And I also don't want to put other people who are in the story on the internet in that way, you know, that could have, that could hurt them. I'm not talking about my abuser, I'm talking about people that were around when I was abused and things like that. Um, so hopefully, I, I mean, you've been here a long time, Lucy, and I think that you're great and I see what you're trying to say. I just, I wish I knew how to show it better that I am fighting. Um, like, what would you want to see? What what in your mind is like, ooh, I see Shami fighting because what does that mean? But here's the thing. I'm never going to stop talking about what happened to me and what I can never get back. There are things I can't get back. There are things I can't, even if I got better right now, that I cannot get back and it's gone forever. And so those things, yeah, it's sad and it sucks and it's, sad to hear about but I can't tell you how many people have told me that sharing that has either scared them or just showed them I guess a physical reality of what can happen you know what I mean I don't know um but like what and I'm just very curious no I really actually want to know because I because you matter like all of you guys matter all of your opinions matter um yeah so what is it in your mind that you would that you think would show that I'm fighting other than showing up for all the things I'm supposed to be showing up for and fighting as hard as I can. Because I'm trying to think, how could I show you guys that? Because I understand what you're saying. For the most part, I talk about just the negative stuff and the consequences and all that stuff. So how could I appropriately... I'm like genuine, I genuinely want to know what people think. Yeah. While well, you answer that, I'm going to grab some water. I'll be right back. I guess we're going over time today. That's okay. I think maybe you just have to trust me. I don't know. Maybe. I don't know. You're right. I have been here a long time. And even though I'm frustrated sometimes, I'm rooting for you. Thanks, Lucy. I appreciate that. 
I've been here long enough to see the cycles and I always fear we're in another one. Well, we are, and that's the reality though. That's what happens with some people. And I've been talking about this a lot more recently and I'm not trying to make excuses to you. I'm trying to explain to you why I'm not, you know, like someone else on the internet. Like, we're all different. We all have different stories. Like, I'm not like Mia. I can't, Mia was purging for five or six years, I think. And I've had an eating disorder since I was five years old. Like, it's all I know. Like, it's engraved in my brain. So for some people, it takes longer and you fall into these cycles over and over and over. And that's the bitch of an eating disorder. Like, that's what makes it so cruel and so awful because I have to have my addiction in order to live. And it's been engraved in me since five years old, my entire life, pretty much, that I can remember. Um, so different people go at different speeds, different people have very big ups and downs and not everybody is the same. Not everybody can do things the way that maybe you would want them to do or hope they would do. But I think maybe just, um, I think just, just please be patient, I guess. And if it's something that you can't stand to see over and over if I if it's a new cycle or whatever if that happens again if I start a new cycle again because right now I'm on my way up by the way um but if I were to fall again someday which I'm not planning to but it wouldn't surprise me who knows I don't know we don't know how anything's gonna happen and if that did if that would upset you so much I would rather like you just don't watch for your sake like I don't want to trigger you I don't want to I don't want to like hurt you I don't want to upset you but it doesn't have to be a cycle shammy. There are a multitude of options and you haven't tried all of them. I just want you to be open. I'm very open, Lucy. I am very open to those options. I have looked into those options. I have talked about those options with my therapist, with my doctor, with my psychiatrist, with my church leaders. Um, not one of them thinks that some of those options are for me and I don't either. So, so I'm sorry that I haven't technically done, you know, the biggest option that everyone throws out, which is like inpatient treatment. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. And I hope that worked for you. And that's great if that worked for you. Um, but right now I have to trust my team because they know what they're doing and they've been doing this for ever and they went to school for it and they've studied the ins and outs. And, you know, I, I'm just, it's just that you can't see what I'm doing. You can't see the work I'm doing. So maybe I can try and share a little bit more about that. Maybe I can, when I go to therapy, maybe I can like do it every week where every week I'll tell you what I learned in therapy and how it helped me or something like that. Would that, would that help do you think maybe? Yeah, I have a really, really great team. I'm in good hands and I've got my medical doctor and my <laughs> psychological doctors both very, very involved and none of them think it's, it's, um, that it's good for me to go inpatient because of things that I've told them and because of things that they have taken the time to, uh, what's the word, assess me, I guess, um, and all of those factors put together and some of those things I can't share with you why. So you just have to trust me. Can you do that? And if not, then I don't know. I don't know. Okay, yeah. If you want a suggestion, maybe discussing and trying to implement alternative coping strategies that you use to, to, to replace binging and purge cycles. Yep, I love that. Okay, I can do that. I can, op more, I can open up more about that. But yeah, I mean, I do have like privacy in my life. I know I share almost everything with you, but there are some things I don't want to share with you and that's my right. Um, what's really worrying? Um, yeah, I mean, I can see from your point of view, maybe like, yeah, Kenny, and I, I went to an inpatient place and toured it with my therapist there. In 
inpatient can totally be a bad option for people, but there are lots of other options you haven't explored. How do you know that? Besides inpatient, what are you thinking? And how do you know I haven't explored it already? How do you know I'm not already doing it? I don't know. Awesome, Isaiah, thank you. It's an idea out of left field and I really don't promote other channels, but really and truly sharing the work of Byron. Byron, Katie, who work uh, in your work, makes you embrace your shortcomings to get through the tough times. That's awesome, that's great. Yeah, I, I do. I share everything, everything with my husband and my family and my very closest friends. And the rest, I, I keep private. Or, or, or I mean, I keep that stuff private from the rest of my life, my world. There are just some things that are mine and that are too hard for me to talk about, <laughs> which says a lot because I talk about everything on here. Like, you wouldn't just come to me and be like, hey, can you please tell me exactly how your dad molested you and exactly what he did to you and how old you were and what it felt like and what it made you feel like. Like, tell me everything, Shani. Like, I'm never gonna tell you that, you know? And it's that same type of thing. I'm working through trauma right now that I can't share with you. I can't share with you the details of the trauma. All I can say is that there is trauma and that I'm working through it. You know what I mean? I don't know. Um, I don't like that you tell us you share everything about your recovery, but then apparently you don't, which is, which one is it? You don't have to do either, but like which one? Well, I do. That's what I said. I share, no, I said I share, I share everything on the internet pretty much, except for these things. Never have I said that I share every single part of my therapy with you. Therapy is different. Like, I totally understand that you're maybe concerned, but I don't know. I have stated so many times, <laughs> I don't know how many more, more times I can say it, of what I need from you and what I expect from this relationship and my YouTube channel and what I expect myself to give and what I hope that I can receive from you. And if you can't do those things, then then it might just be best for you to not be here because I'm just different than you. I'm different from other channels you've maybe seen and I'm different from people that you've seen and I'm different from you and your own story and your own recovery and everything like that. Like, thank you, Rock Tahoe. No, I know. But just remember that you're only observing, you're saying you're just asking questions, making observations. That's totally fair. Just remember that um yes i have but like that wasn't something that i wanted to share but i guess i will now because i just did so whoops so you've been exploring outpatient options or no yes <laughs> and i'm in outpatient option <laughs> i don't understand i don't think like and you can take this as i'm being defensive i feel like i'm trying to be really fair and really patient here but i don't think it's um anybody's business but mine exactly my treatment plan that I'm doing because it's hard for me to talk about because it's really hard it's really hard and so there are some things I have to keep vague for my own protection and oh my gosh you also said that you were doing best when you had tough love and now that's apparently not true. So which one is it? Maybe that was true at one point. People's minds change. I'm sorry. This is what's true right now, I guess. Maybe that was true at one point. Yeah, tough love is okay from people. She knows. Yeah, it's different. There's a big difference. Anyway, my mind changes. Every human does. 
my mind changes on what I need. My mind changes and I try and be vocal about what I need. And no, she's not a troll. She's been here a very, very long time. Which is why I'm really, really trying here to have a respectful conversation with her. But it's, it's just like, try and look at it from my point of view. Like try and like imagine people that you don't even know, that you haven't even met in person basically telling me that you are, or basically telling you that you are, because you're not doing recovery or whatever it may be, the way that they want it, um, based on 15 minutes a day of what they see, like, how would you feel? You know what I mean? If that's the best you were doing, why wouldn't it work now? I don't know, Lucy. I don't have an answer for you. What? I don't know. Yes, people change, people change their minds. People need different things at different times. This is what I need right now. So I will continue to fight an eating disorder that I've had for 32 years and work through the dozens and dozens of traumas that I have um, with my therapist and continue to see my physical doctor as well and my psychiatrist who gives me meds for what I need and continue and just be patient with the process because it takes it takes a bit like it's it's hard trauma um I will say this like trauma therapy is so so hard um and I my even my therapist has told me this very recently she even said like listen for people like you, she's like, she's actually, okay, how does she word it? She said something about how, she's like, you're actually ahead of where I thought you would be. She's like, all the trauma that you have, the fact that you're working on it so quickly is huge. Like I'm, I'm working and dismissing traumas so quickly. I can do a full trauma in one session because I'm so desperate to do it that I just want to get it done and I just want to make sure it's done. And so that's what I've been doing. And she said like, we can slow down like you've got a lifetime full of traumas and I'm like I know but like I just want to get it done you know what I mean I don't know no motivation Monday isn't happening right now because I'm doing live streaming every day instead so I'm live streaming every day in November so no motivation Monday until oh wait does that mean it won't be till after vlogmas I didn't think about that wait that sucks because I have some really good ideas for motivation Monday crap let me think that through but for sure there will not be one tomorrow. I'm sorry, I didn't film one this week for tomorrow. But maybe next week, maybe I'll try and do one because I have a really good one in mind. Something that's helping me a lot, you know? Anyway, well, um, okay. I think a therapist would suggest they step back and reevaluate their motives here if she's that unhappy with you. It's extremely unhealthy to be this invested in hurting you. Yeah. I just, it just makes me really bummed when I see comments or whatever of, of people just saying that, like taking my pain and making it into like something that it doesn't need to be. You know what I mean? Like twisting it and, and saying that I'm like super defensive and, and I'm a, I'm a child and I can't take any constructive criticism. And it's like, at the same time, I am a grown adult and I tell you what I need from you and the other stuff I take from the people in my close life. I take the constructive criticism from my family, my friends, and sometimes it helps from you guys too. But I don't like when people take just flat out criticism and say that it's constructive because it's not constructive if you really have been watching me that long you know that for me personally my brain chemistry my body chemistry that doesn't work for me for me personally what helps me is to say shani you're doing a great job shani i know you can do this shani you've done this before you can do it again instead of well you failed again and you're do doing this wrong doing this wrong i already know all that you don't need to remind me and i'm such a sensitive person that like why like 
why are you telling me this? I already know. And so it, if that's me getting defensive, fine, but like, don't twist it to be like, I'm getting defensive if you're just trying to help me. No, you're not. Because I've told you dozens of times that that doesn't help. It doesn't help to judge and assume things, which is what you're doing. You're judging and assuming based off of a 15 minute video once a day, if that, and now an hour live stream a day. Like you're not seeing the rest of the 23 hours of my day. You don't know what I'm doing. And so I don't know. It's like, I'm sure someone will take this, especially on Reddit. I'm sure and I'll just be like, oh, she's just so defensive and she's constructive person. No, it's just be appropriate about it. I've told you what I need. If you can't offer that, then I'm sorry if your methods don't work for me. I've told you what I need. And if you can't give it to me, don't be surprised if they don't work for me. So anyway, all that to be said, I know that you care and you've watched me for so long, Lucy. And so have a lot of these people that say things like this, but just at some point, you gotta realize that nobody's the same and everybody has different needs in their selves. And for me, when I get stuff like that, it, um, I don't wanna say what it does to me because I don't want it to come off as like manipulative or something, but it does something horrible to me. And that's just my situation. And maybe someday I'll open up about that, but I don't even think I've opened up about that to anybody yet. But maybe someday I will now that I'm thinking of it because some a lot of people are like me. A lot of people have the same thing that I do when people, it goes beyond like, oh, they're like, it's not that you're attacking me or being mean or anything like that. It's like a different feeling that I can't explain. I don't know. Anyway. Um, yeah. That being said, I'm going to go because I'm really... Um, frustrated and I'm trying to not be because I can tell they're trying to help but like it's not helpful when I've told you that that kind of thing isn't helpful like stop bringing up everything I've done wrong I know what I've done wrong I know that and minds change and things change and oh my gosh guys like recovery is so up and down and everybody's different everybody's story is different everybody's body chemistry is different and let's see, that's an assumption, Lucy. Don't you think that's fair to say that you're assuming? When I needed help, I couldn't see what help I needed. I think that is where you are. Okay, you think that, but you don't know that. So, right? Is that fair? That's fair, right? Don't delete her comments, let her answer, by the way. I'm serious, I wanna know. Is that fair? To say that you think what's going on versus you know what's going on? <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not trying to let her dominate me, I'm trying to, to stand up for myself. Because who knows if I'll be able to do this again, calmly. Okay, I'm not calm, but am I at least like acting calm? <laughs> Just kidding. Oh, everyone has, oh, we, we all have tons of work to do, but I'm not sharing my story to a big audience. Then I would need to think about how I communicate, communicated my message, yeah. And you're not, so. Maybe once you do that, then you can just, then you, you can see how difficult that is. I didn't sign up doing this to like know that, thinking that someday I would have to share like every detail of my recovery. I never thought that. I thought I looked at it as a support system and as, and is, and like for me to try and uh, um, bring awareness for eating disorders and get people talking about it, which they are, and that's great. So yeah, so maybe if you did it yourself, then maybe you'd understand where I'm coming from. It gets to a point where, but you said this before, Shani, tough love didn't help, and then I'm doing the best I ever have, and the tough love made a huge difference, and now nope, tough love is the devil. 
like Shani. Yeah, and minds change. Situations change. I'm in a different I'm in a different mental state right now than I was when I said that. Those things change, hon. Those things change. Those things change all the time. Especially in recovery. No matter what addiction you have, those things change. Your thoughts, your feelings, your needs change all the time. And that's fair. Tough love from people you don't know isn't love, it's cruel. Tough love from those closest to you is different. And there have been times here and there where tough love or constructive criticism has helped me from people that I don't know. But it's not all the time and that's okay like i don't know i i freaking have bpd like i don't know when what day i'm gonna be which shanny and which thing i'm gonna need and i don't know sometimes it goes in seasons for me and stuff like that you know what i mean i don't know and i feel like this is kind of pointless because i feel like every time i try and defend myself about this about like how i'm feeling and and what i need and trying to express what i need um i feel like whoever i'm speaking to and conversing with that has an opposite view, has an opposing view, I feel like there's no winning. And so um, maybe that's something, honestly, I'm not trying to be mean that you need to look into yourself. Why are you so obsessed with, with knowing every tiny little detail of what I do and expecting things that are not appropriate for me to share that I don't want to right now? Someday maybe I will, but right now I am in therapy, doing trauma therapy, working through the hardest things that I've ever been through that are details that are so painful and so gross and so, like it makes me want to come home from therapy and just take a shower for like four hours straight. I don't, but it makes me feel that way. You know what I mean? Like it re and it re brings up all those things to deal with it. And that's scary to do, but that's what trauma therapy is and I'm doing it and I'm proud of myself for it. So, um, that being said, uh, I think I've made my point millions of times. So I'm going to go. I love you guys very much. And your life is a huge risk and you're showing people it's okay to go to the hospital multiple times, even to the ICU and not go to higher care. Oh my God. I'm glad to know that you know my treatment plan so well that I'm not getting the help that I need. So take care. I'm sorry that me going to the hospital multiple times is bothering people. I'm sorry that I have health issues and mental health issues that are that have landed me in the hospital many times i'm sorry that my eating disorder issues have landed me in the hospital i try and do my best to show what i've learned and and how it's because you're showing people it's okay to be a huge risk and act like doing the same thing repeatedly is working it isn't it's not okay to show people going to the icu is normal when did i say going to the icu was normal for real. This is blowing my mind. You are just nitpicking at every little thing. Like, what? <laughs> Do I get online and like tell people that it's normal to go to the ICU and to go to the hospital for... When have I done that? No, I've always felt ashamed of it. I've always felt embarrassed. It's hard for me to even tell you that I've had to go. When have I ever made that okay? And if some if somebody feels like they should go to the hospital because they've seen me go to the hospital, I'm sorry. I don't know how to, I don't know how to, I know, I'm sorry. I'm trying to end this, but like,
Okay. Um, You're showing people that example and then also saying, you know what's right for you. How can those two things be true? That you are hugely at risk, but also know exactly what you need to do. I do know exactly what I need to do. I'm saying that I know what is right for me based on myself and my doctors. So take it up with them you have a problem with it, I guess. I'm going to go. I love you guys and I'll see you tomorrow. And remember forever and always that you're beautifully worth it. And I am too. Bye guys.